Today, I'm going to show you how to do a very easy UX improvement within your, really within any web applications. We're going to build this specific one in Next.js and Tailwind CSS, but these principles are going to apply regardless of whatever your web application is. So this is going to be our final little demo project here. And a couple of things that we're going to focus on is linking within a page here. So this is a single page application and we're linking within the page, but that's not really the main focus here. The other focus is the snap scroll feature here. So you can see we're scrolling three fourths into this more content section. I let go and it snaps to that entire section, which I think is just a really simple, easy to do, a very nice UX improvement for your web applications especially if you have like some longer content applications or some several different sections on a page like so. So without further ado, let's head into VS Code and build this within Next.js using Tailwind CSS. Here in VS Code, the first thing that we are going to do is run npx create hyphen next hyphen app at latest. And then we're going to name this snap scroll. We're not going to use TypeScript, no ESLint, yes to Tailwind CSS, no SRC, yes to the app router, no import alias. So this is going to create it, and then I'm going to go to File, Open, and then open this within VS Code. So here within our new project, I'm going to close this welcome screen, close this, and then we're going to open our app folder, rename page.js to JSX, because that will give me a little bit co better code completion. And then from here, we're going to start building some of the features here. So first thing is we're going to remove the image at the top, remove everything here that is returned. So remove all the JSX and we're just going to start fresh like so. So we're going to start with a div and this div is going to be our wrapper div. So it is going to have the class name of flex because we're going to use flexbox here and then it is going to be the height of the screen so this div should fill out the entire height of the screen and now we want to create our sidebar and of course you could create this as its own next.js component we are going to just write it right within this home page and we're not really going to create any components here but it would also be reasonable to abstract this out into its own component if you want to do that as well but this is going to start as a div. And then for the class names here, it is going to be width. That is going to be one sixth of our screen width because our sidebar is going to take up a sixth of our screen width. We're going to use a background of gray 900 to give us our kind of dark themed background. The text is going to be a white color. It is going to be fixed. So that's going to make sure that it doesn't scroll with the page or I said there, that's going to make sure that it doesn't only stay at the top of the page. It's going to make sure it scrolls with the page as we scroll down, like we saw in the kind of introductory demo. And then the height is going to be full height of the screen. It's going to be flex items are going to be, I'm going to just put them in the center of the sidebar. And then we're also going to justify them center and then below this we're going to create a nav element this nav is going to have a class name in which we are going to put some spacing of in the y-axis we're going to space them out by four to give them a little bit of spacing between our navigation items and then here i'm just using a tags here i kind of wanted this to be a little less Next.js specific and a little bit more general to like any React application. But I think that you could also use the link tag in Next.js. But for whatever reason, I use just a tags here to link to different sections of the page. So this is going to link to section one. So what this is doing with a hashtag one here as the href, or hashtag section one, it's saying link to the element on this page that has the ID of section one. 
So later we're going to add an element with the ID of section one, and that's what this link is going to link to. And the text is just going to say section one. We're going to add some styles here. So I'm going to move these to a different, so class name. Now we're going to make these links look more like buttons. So we're going to do block. We're going to make the width full. We're going to center the text though. We're going to give some adding in the vertical axis of three, not 33. We're going to give some padding in the X axis of four. We're going to make these rounded with medium border, border, transparent background of gray 700. And then we're going to do hover background gray 600 to give a little bit of a hover effect. And then we're also going to transform hover colon scale hyphen 105 to make them scale up a little bit when we hover over them. And then we're going to transition the duration of 300. So that should make this look like a button that has a nice little hover effect. And I'm going to close our folder here so we can see everything a little bit better. And I'll, of course, have these styles so you can, if you want, kind of copy and paste things. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add different A tags here for our four different sections. So what we could do is just copy and paste all of them and copy and paste all the styles. But if we ever needed to go and change these styles, that would be kind of a headache. So what I want to do instead is say const button style is equal to, and then we're going to set it equal to this string here, like so. And then instead of using this hard-coded text, we're going to just set this to button style. And now for all of our other links, so I'm going to copy the link tag, we're just going to reuse the button style constant. So this way, if we want to change any of the button styles here, we can just change it in one place right up here, rather than needing to change it on all of these different A tags here. And of course, we need to change this to section two and section two, section three and section three, and then section four and section four. And then what I'm going to do is run npm run dev. And then we're going to open this up on Locos 3000 and see what this looks like right now. So, all right, we have a sidebar menu here that has a nice little hover effect. It looks like maybe, did I spell rounded incorrectly? Yeah, I did. Rounder. It should be rounded. And now they're all rounded off. So that was a good example. Like if we didn't pull this into its own constant, we would then have to go change it to rounded in all these different places. So that definitely comes in handy. And these are looking good. So we have kind of our sidebar here. But now we just need to create our kind of snap scroll as well as some of the content. So to do this, below our navigation div here, within our outer div, but as a sibling to our navigation div, I'm going to add another div and it is going to have the class name of width hyphen five over six so basically what we're doing is saying this should take a one six our nav bar and then the rest of our content should take up the rest of the page so the other kind of five sixth of the page that our nav bar is not using and then we also want to add a few other things here that are going to allow our scroll behavior so one of those things is going to be margin left auto, which is basically just going to say, hey, keep the nav bar over on the left side. And then all of the content is going to be along the right side of the nav bar or to the right of the nav bar. So it's going to place this div to the right of the nav bar. And then we also want to do overflow of auto, which is going to give us a scroll bar wherever we kind of need it. In this case, it's going to give us a vertical scroll bar which I don't always love, but in this case, I think it makes sense to have. We're also going to do snap Y. So it's going to tell the browser that when scrolling, it should snap in the Y axis. And then we're also going to set snap mandatory, which is basically going to say, regardless of where the scroll position is, 
snap to the next closest child element. So if you're like halfway through a child element and you stop scrolling, it's going to snap to the nearest child element. This will make more sense when I show you it. And then we'll make it the height of the screen. And then within this, we need to start putting our different sections in place. So we're going to do a section. And then the class name on this is going to be, well, we're going to use the same classes for all of our different sections, except for we're going to use a different background for all of our sections to make them a little bit different. So we're going to actually do early brace back tags. And I'm going to set this one to background black. And then we're going to do dollar sign curly braces. And we're going to create a constant called section style. And now we're going to go create that constant up above. So I'm going to say const section style is equal to. And these are going to be styles that we share across all four of our different sections that we add to this application. So for section style it is going to be H screen. So each section should take up the entire height of the screen. Text is going to be white. It's going to be display flex and it's going to be flex hyphen column justify center items center. And then we are also going to do snap start. Meaning for this child element, if we have the snap Y and snap mat mandatory set, we're telling the browser to snap to the start of this section element here. So snap to the start of the element. And then we'll also add some padding here. And then we already use this section style right here for this section. That looks pretty good here. And then now we just need to add some like kind of mock content here. So I'm just going to say section one and I'm going to say introduction. And then we are going to, I'm going to scroll this down a little bit for section one here. I'm going to do class name and we're going to do text is going to be four XL margin bottom is going to be six. And then we're going to add a few different paragraphs here. So for these paragraphs, I basically just had ChatGPT come up with some content here for us. So we're not really going to focus on the content itself. So I'm going to actually just copy and paste from the final project here. You can, of course, do the same. But in this case, I just had ChatGPT come up with some like auto-generated content to fill out this section a little bit more. And we want to follow a very similar structure for another section. So below this section, we are going to do an additional section, but this time it's going to be an section two ID because we want this to snap to section two. So just to recap this here, we have an A tag with an href of hashtag section one that's saying link to on this current page, the ID or the element with the ID of section one. So it's going to snap to our section one here. And I'm actually realizing that we forgot to put an ID here. So it should be ID is equal to section one. And then that link tag is going to link to this element with the ID of section one here. And then this tag with section two is going to link to the ID of section two here which it's a good thing I recapped that because I was definitely going to forget to put an ID of section one right there. For section two, we're going to copy these class names from section one. We are going to use those here, but instead of background black, we're going to set it to background gray 800 just to have a little bit different background for this section. We're going to have a very similar H1 here, so I'm going to copy this H1. And of course, you can create your own section component here within React and reuse those here that would be very reasonable to do here but i'm gonna say this section two and then i'm gonna call this one key concepts now below this h1 i'm gonna fill out the rest of this section with just some content here i'm using like some card content that is just going to make this look decent like you might see in the actual application you could really just copy and paste these paragraphs if, if you want to, or you can copy and paste this content that I just pasted here in from the final project here. I just don't want to focus too much on 
like this content generation because that's not really what this tutorial is about. It's more so about creating these snap features and that sort of thing. So you can go ahead and do that. But from here, we have section one and two. I'm going to go ahead and copy section one. I'm going to paste it below section two, but we're going to call this section three. And then, I don't know, instead of introduction, I'm going to just say more content and then we're going to leave everything the same and make sure your ID is section three here. And now I'm going to copy section two and we're going to paste that below section three and then just make sure to set this to section four, section four, and I'm going to call this conclusion and then we'll keep everything else the same. That should be just fine. So kind of hand waved over some of this content generation here, but you know, it's, it's not really the focus of this tutorial. And you can, of course, really just copy and paste a lot of this content as well from the final project. But from here, let's go back and check this out. So we have section one. If I click on section two, it links to section two here, section three, in section four. So our links are working. And now if I start scrolling with my mouse pad here and I get like over halfway covered, so I'm seeing most of key concepts and then I let go, you see it snaps to key concepts. And then if I do the same thing and I let go, it snaps to more content and it snaps to conclusion. But if I don't get like all the way up here, so you see, I'm still seeing most of conclusion it's going to snap back to conclusion. So we have this kind of snap feature, which I think is actually pretty dang good UX, especially for a single page application like this one. Oh, it's just kind of snapping to the majority of the content here for these section items. And then we can, of course, click to the different sections. You'll see this feature very common in single page applications as well. So really, that gives us what we want here. Let's just recap so you understand how all this works. So what we did for the linking, we created a tags or link tags that have an href set to an ID of the element we want to link to. So this links to section one, section two, section three. So we're telling the browser for this href, go link on this page to the element with the ID of section one and the ID of section two, the ID of section three. And then our sections here have an ID of section four, section three, and section two, and section one. So in our page, when we click these links, it links to the corresponding sections on the page, which is really nice. And then for the snap scroll feature, what we had to do to get that working is for the wrapper div, we needed to set overflow auto to make sure that we have a scroll bar. And then we set snap Y so it snaps in the Y axis. And then we also set snap mandatory. So no matter what, so even if we're not like very close to seeing key concepts here, so you see like we're really not that close. If I let go here, we're still gonna snap to the page. It's gonna force a mandatory snap so one of these sections is showing fully here. It's not going to stop like right here. If I let go, it snaps mandatorily, no matter what. And then on the section itself, if we look at our styles, we need to set snap start. So it snaps to the start of our section elements. So hopefully you found this helpful. I think it's a really cool kind of UX feature that looks really good for single page applications. And, you know, I it, it took me like way too long to learn this like linking strategy within a page. I don't know why, but it's just nothing I was ever really taught. And it took me like a stupid amount of time to like be like, oh, that's how that works. And there's a surprising amount of stuff in web development that is like very simple, but can be small UX improvements like that. So Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.